you you play in the MLS as well. You were drafted in the second second round, is it that you you were drafted uh, and you played a couple of years, uh, if you're not mistaken, right? Yeah, that's that's Certainly. that's yeah. You, it, I had a couple years, a couple years as a professional, so I got kind of my feet wet. I had a good first year, played a lot. Second year, I was injured a little bit, and then got released in my third year. Um, and then I went to Scotland for a little bit and played there for a year. Mm -hmm. And at some point, I think if if you're smart, um, you know, I, I I could say that I was injured a lot, which I was, but mm -hmm. at the same time, you realize which which trajectory your career is going. And, okay. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And sports as a professional, right? You're 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 not actually putting down any established thing that you're growing on. You're either just getting better and moving forward or you're sort of your career diminishing. And sadly, my was diminishing pretty quickly. So, mm -hmm. um, you know, I had to look to move on and that, that's to when I got on. into coaching. That's and right. Obviously, the I could have stayed in a professional game, but I, I think I think university sports is the best thing in the world. And, and well, you know, but you make probably I, I, the right decision because you're just being extremely successful, man. You be you know, you are. Pac-12 coach of the years and one, two, three, four, five times, if you're not mistaken. So, so one, two, four, four times, right? Uh, uh, four times you be pac coach Pac-12 of the year. You have accomplished a lot. You have recruit players that are going 21 players so far. Maybe it's more. I don't know if I'm mistaken. You correct me, but you have 21 players that are being drafted to, to MLF, uh, MLS teams. So uh, that being said, <laughs> You know what you're doing right there, you know? <laughs> well, these kids get the best of all worlds. You know, I always say, you know, the if if you're starting for our team uh, and when you leave here, you're going to have a professional career. Now, what does a professional career mean? Like you and I know, I mean, it means you're going to get to live and play the game you love for a few years. Does it mean mm -hmm. you're going to retire? Probably not. But, it, you know, that that's everyone's hope is that they get to play. And, and so for us, we have all these success stories of these kids who come here, get their degree and continue to play. But the mm. beauty is, and as we both know, then you have all these real success stories and probably the guys who are most successful are the guys who don't even go on and play. And they're mm. the guys who go on. I have amazing college soccer experience and mm -hmm. then, and then go on and, and have great lives in terms of, because they have their degree they're they Without a question. Um, and, and that's what we want in life is options, right? We, and, it, it, and and they'll build a a foundation, right? Because they, from there you have friendships, you have marriages, you have you know partnerships. You know you start an entrepreneur, or you you become you know that's that's the life of I think that the best out of college uh, experience and playing sports right there is it's about that is you know the the foundation that you built. Yeah, definitely, like you said, you know you playing sports that's that's good, right? But. Most definitely, you know, it, it's about, you know, what is in front of you, right? In front of, you know, uh, uh, the future, you know. But coach, take me over, uh, you know, on the recruiting steps that you, when, when you're a student athlete, you know, uh, the difference between now and then, you know, what 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 is it? And and I want you to take me over as well on what you mentioned, you know, ab about the Ivy League, because a lot of people is confused about the Ivy League. You know, they think they will be able to get an athletic scholarship to the Ivy League. And by my understanding, you do not get an athletic scholarship. So, so can you help me with that? Yeah, the the I mean, things have definitely changed since you know, in, in the many years ago since I went to school to now, and um, mm. I think it's better, right? I think whatever we think of technology and social media, well, I mean, we wouldn't be here without it, right? Without, we yeah. Be able to, mm -hmm. And I think the ability to spread positive and and good information um is great and so that's what we're here doing today i think it's it's an interesting one so with the ivy league yes they don't have athletic scholarships but what they do have is the best financial aid in the world so mm -hmm. I think for families that need it and i think a lot of the big private schools it doesn't help us here as a, as a public institution but mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. all the big private schools that are that are very well endowed mm -hmm. um, can really navigate both the financial aid and then the athletic or academic scholarship. I always say the better the school, the less the academic money, because if it, you know, the, the better you are as a school, the less enticement you have to give to get someone to come to your school. Mm -hmm. the academic scholarship is basically saying you're better than our average student. So we want you here. Correct. Uh, at the Ivy leagues, there's no such thing as better than, you know, academically. So they, so they, <laughs> don't give that, but they do want, when they see someone they want, they want to make it work for their family. So mm -hmm. they, uh, you know, they have some of the most attractive 
financial aid packages around. Um, mm-hmm. it, you know, it, and, it, yeah. What was the, in the sorry? Uh, what was you know the the the, the rules? Then maybe if you want to go over, you know, what would you, you change on all the regulation that they have with you? You know, because I mean, you come on, you were in a great institution. You know, you're talking about Harvard. <laughs> you know, <laughs> you're talking about you know uh, probably the top what five in in yeah. the planet right For sure so 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 take me over a little bit coach yeah well i think i think it's one of those schools that you know when you you know say the name everyone will listen right mm-hmm. i mean every family and you almost sometimes had to recruit the family rather than the kid because the kid mm-hmm. might be like, i want to play soccer and the, and the parents would be like i want you to go to harvard and you, know, <laughs> you understand yes. you understand with the parents have a little bit maybe more uh experience in the world to know what doors that will open but mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um what you know so it's more of the off season so in the in, during the regular season um we had to start a little bit later um mm-hmm. because they wanted to give every student athlete of the entire summer to do internships so we had to start a little bit later and we played a couple less games mm-hmm. i think that's changed a little bit since i left um and they've given them a little bit more leeway but then in the spring You know, in the spring, I'm with my guys, you know, from January till end of May, you know, at least five days a week, one way or another, I'm around them. Mm-hmm. But, um, you know, in the Ivy Leagues, they had a certain amount of practices and it was you're about to play about a third as many games in the off season. Mm-hmm. You know? So it was just one of those situations. You know, I'm here to be a mentor. I'm here to be part of their lives. And I just, you know, that that was a tricky one for me because I wasn't able to do it quite as much as I like. You know, mm. I get great joy. I get great joy being on a field with a bunch of guys trying to get better. And so when we can do that from January to May, um, you know, almost every day, we 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 love that. And our guys love that. And it was mm. just one of those we weren't allowed to do it as much. So I don't know the full rules and regulations now, but I know they've tried to open them up a little more. They're mm-hmm. just more concerned uh about the balance of the student and the athlete to me you know i think it's ridiculous no one's telling the physics major they can't do more physics in the class or they mm-hmm. they can't do more math equations these kids love what they're doing mm-hmm. so you know i think putting limits on what they love is is an interesting um you know and it, it puts them in an interesting dilemma Yeah, yeah, and, and I and I know because I, I I came across to a few guys like that that uh, sometimes they have to pay attention on the regulations, right? They have to, you know, uh, uh, because which you know sometimes we we don't understand, you know, we we need to send some some information to the NCAA to see if we, we can we can add some changes in the leads because that's that's separate, right? The, the, like the I believe stuff like that. But you you were right right there because you know most of the kids are passionate about what they're doing, right? They want to. They want to get better. And if you see, you know, those pro athletes, they are elite athletes. They're constantly practicing. They're constantly, you know, uh, you know, on the field or on the core or whatever. You know, the sports it is. They, they are. It's a routine. You know, if if you stop that, you know, you you probably uh, deviate a little bit. What the progression is as a student athlete, correct? Is that's probably one of the things that you probably focus in the most, right? No, correct. And you would think of at all institutions, you know, a Harvard would realize to be great. These kids have had to study a lot. Right. They've had to do mm-hmm. a lot of work to be a mm-hmm. professional. You have to do a lot of work. And mm-hmm. it's, it's mm-hmm. kind of it's it goes counter to, you know, logic that, you know, in order to be better at something, you certainly have to do it more. And, mm-hmm. you know, I'm not, and you have to do it well and prepare properly. But just the point being is you have to spend a lot of hours at your craft mm-hmm. and hopefully you love doing that. And I think that's the coach's job is to create environments where guys love working at what they are doing, you know, without a question that and that's our biggest thing here is we want great joy in our players and we want them to find, you know, we want practice to be fun. And, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. and I have a lot of, I have a lot of difficulty with, you know, the words like, Oh, he's got to grind or he's got, you know, this is going to be hard. And it is, but like, you know, I think when we're doing things that we love, it's, it's, you know, it's, It's not necessarily viewed that way. You know, I, mm-hmm, I wake mm-hmm. up at 430 to go run. Well, if I do that, you know, and I don't, by the way, but if I did do that, um, <laughs> you know, like it would be hopefully because I, it's what I want to do and I want to get there's results. So it's definitely, not, definitely. You know, I think it's a choice and it's hopefully a choice that you really enjoy doing. 
without a question, without a question. And now let's talk a little bit about the you know University of Washington. I know it's a public school. I have you mentioned uh, that way people get to know a little bit more the institution, right? Uh, but it's a it's a it's a uh, uh, it's a big school. You know, you have around thirty three thousand students right there, right? Yeah. So it's a big school. I think one of the biggest things to understand about public institutions is especially state institutions like University of Washington, but it could be anywhere. If you're, no matter where mm-hmm. you live in the country, um, your own state institution is going to be the cheapest place to go to school usually, Definitely. right? And mm-hmm. so if a California kid wants to come to school at University of Washington, it's going to cost their family, let's say $65,000 a year. But a Washington kid to come to school here, it's going to cost them 30000 So, 30, yeah. you know, just it, it's one of those things that the best deal is always inside your state. Now, kids mm-hmm. don't always want to stay at home. Um, my mm-hmm. job is to recruit them and to convince them that it's the best choice. Um, but it just, you know, financially in sports that aren't headcount sports, you know, football, mm-hmm. volleyball that are either full scholarship or no scholarship. Mm-hmm. It doesn't matter if you're in state, out of state. You're either just on a full ride or on nothing. But on mm-hmm. equivalency sports like men's soccer, baseball, I think softball is the same. You know, a lot of the quote unquote Olympic sports, um, you know, it, it does make a big difference. So if you look at our recruiting, a lot mm-hmm. of our recruiting is done in state. Um, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It is done in state for two reasons. A, as a coach, I love to get to know the players that I'm recruiting. I like to get to know their families. I get to watch them for a longer period of time. Those are mm-hmm. good things. Mm-hmm. But B, there is a financial reason. So if we're giving a half scholarship, you know, it, it covers a lot more for an in-state kid than it would for an out-of-state kid. So it leaves them less to pay. Um, so in turn, financially, it makes a lot more sense for us to be, um, you know, full of in-state to, players. To be, the, yeah, because I, I look at your roster and, and I notice it. I notice it that you have a few guys, a few athletes right there from the state. You do have couple of international players you do have you know people from Arizona which I saw a guy that you that you have right now from from Arizona as well um but you know the main the main goal here you know is to, you know for you is to get to know those guys better but what happened with the guys like the outside you know like like do you like to go to the camps do you like to do showcases uh do you go and do you know uh, do you invite into your institution? How how that works a little bit? Yeah. For, so, so on men's soccer side, I think it's a couple of things. I think, you know, the before, you know, their their junior year, it's, it is a lot of just watching showcases and putting guys into databases, you know, mm-hmm. and then maybe inviting just in your, you know, your group emails is, is get, trying to get guys to camp. I do think it's always important to, play in front of coaches and maybe play for them. So camps Mm -hmm. are very important, but I'll be the first one to admit it. Camps are, you know, they're expensive and Mm -hmm. they are, you know, if, if you were, you know, they're not a great bet, let's put it that way. Cause there's a hundred kids at the camp and maybe two will, will get to be on the roster or get to be recruited. So, Mm -hmm. you know, the, the odds are that it's not going to I don't want to say work out for you. So I always talk to kids who come to our camps. I say, how do you make this a positive no matter what? And you know, mm-hmm. and I, and I'm very honest. I say, it's going to be very difficult. You know, just the numbers here, there's too many of you to recruit. So how do we still get something good out of this situation? You know, mm-hmm. and by that, I mean, we have to learn, we have to grow, we have to take information. This is one of p- many schools they could look at. So let's at least walk away, whether we're going to be able to recruit you or not, knowing what, what I, potential institution looks like for you so this is what university of washington would look like but you can probably compare us to 20 other big state schools that are in the top 50 in you know the country so Mm -hmm. there's still there's still great information to be gathered from camps whether you make it or not Mm -hmm. um Mm -hmm. and then there's showcases we try to go to a lot of showcases and and see guys obviously the warm weather places are where we go because it's nicer so down arizona right Mm -hmm. california texas um we were down there a lot florida uh-huh. uh, mm-hmm. and those, are, those are good events um unfortunately or fortunately depending on how good your team is might dictate how many good games you get um so i think if you're on a top team i think it's easy to be seen a lot the mm-hmm. hardest ones are for the guys who are on lesser teams 
um, but very talented players. And and what do they do? It's it that's a tricky uh that, that's where camps maybe come into play for those guys. Interesting, interesting, because uh, you know, it, it takes me to to how you know how soon it takes me to, you know, like how did I start making contact with you? You know, or how soon do you take that in consideration as well? Like, hey, you know, uh, let me send you my email. Let me send you my profile. That way you can take a look at my highlights, take a look at my, you know, my my grades, of course, because I know even though it's a, it's a public school, uh, uh, you know, you have to have good grades in University of Washington to for, in order for you to be part of it, right? Because they have to accomplish that. You know, a, a, that's the administration, right? They they have to go, you know, close to their three sevens. Is that correct? Uh, uh, three sevens, three eights uh, uh, on, on the grade. So, so take me over and how how soon in, in academics standpoints go from you uh, or as a recruiter. Yeah, I think a couple of things is important. I think the email is great, um, mm -hmm. and it's it's such an easy way to communicate. But the same way, I think with us all. Because it's such an easy way to communicate these days, we're all getting a lot of them. So I think a lot of coaches and a lot of people, right, we're just trying mm -hmm. to get through our emails every day. Like, you know, meaning like, you know, and I try to respond to every personal, anyone who writes me personally, you know, mm -hmm. like I will always respond and, and or someone in our staff will always get back just to say, hey, thanks for the email and and let them know our situation. So I think it's a great um, starting spot. Now, I mm -hmm. think sophomores, when I see them, I honestly... We're getting so many emails these days that if a sophomore before we you know we'll respond with our generic NCA rules and mm -hmm. camp insight mm -hmm. and hey, mm -hmm. follow our social media. Um, but that's all we can do. And so I honestly don't spend a lot of time looking um at that person because it's just too, it's just a little bit too early. Now, right before June 15th, uh, you know, so maybe right about now with that sophomore group gonna be juniors. We'll mm -hmm. start reading those a little instead of filing them away. We'll start reading them a little bit closer. So this is a really important time to start reaching out. Um, and then the juniors, yeah, I think that's a great time. But I think, you know, what can now everyone do? Everyone can now put together highlight tapes, which again is good and bad because everyone's got one. Um, yeah. <laughs> so I think it's. I mean, I think the biggest thing is like put your best highlight first. Right? And then, and, yeah, and then I'm gonna and, show uh, you everything that I do best, right? I'm not gonna show you, you know, my my errors, but which is important yeah. for you guys too as well, right? Hundred percent. And you get that, you know, you get that great highlight first that catches your attention because, you know, I mean, we're all we're almost now looking again. As I say, we're trying to get you know, and this is just the truth of the matter. You're trying to get through your emails. You're trying to get through your highlight videos every day. So it's a case of, do I watch it for 30 seconds? Do I watch it for a minute? Do I watch it for two minutes? You know, or do mm -hmm. I watch it for all five minutes of the highlights, however long the highlight tape is. And I think it's dictated by a, hey, another thing is good music. Everyone likes good music. So if you've got good music on that highlight tape, <laughs> it, it keeps you there. But I think it's, I think it's that. And I think also in the emails, what is the connection? You know, what is a connection to Washington? What's a connection to whatever school you're writing to? Maybe there's not one, but if there is one, it, it just makes it, it it makes there be a connection that says this guy actually is interested. This might mm -hmm. not be a, this might not be one of 500 emails he's sending out today. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, hey, I got family in the Seattle area, or you know, my cousin went to school there, or you know, I just love you know, I love the mountains and the water, and you guys are surrounded by it. it. Might be that simple, but it just says, oh, you know, like there, there's, there, there's maybe a little connection here because, for an again, for an out of state kid, for us, it, there has to be something more. There has to have to either be a you know, there has for us to really think that we're going to go grab this guy, and mm, you mm. know. Um, so in, in turn, that's that's what it comes down to is those little connections. You be you become a little bit more personal if you want to put it that way in order for for you guys to to make a decision right there. And and you know because I mean, if if I'm a soccer player and I'm looking, you know, uh, you know the NCAA teams, and I mean you are right now. Correct me if I'm wrong, coach. You know, but if if I'm not mistaken, you are uh, number eleven in the nation right now you know, uh, when it comes to soccer. I don't know if it, that's this is a mistake right here by the NCAA, but that's this is what I'm reading uh, uh, right here. So if I'm a soccer player, right, uh, I will look, you know, the top 50 universities in the United States, you know, and I, I, and I start searching. If I see Washington right there, it's going to come my attention. So 
uh, I, I think, you know, like the, the out of state kids, you know, uh, um, they need to become more personal, you know, and that's one of the things that I see the most, you know, I always talk the most, you need to become personal. And, and, and one of the things that I, I want to ask you as well, what, what happened with the senior guys? Are you open to, to recruit a senior guy or it's too late for that? No, I think you're all, you're always open. Um, you know, I think there's, there's, there's a couple windows, I think, especially in soccer. And I think this is for most of the schools, there's an early window junior year through your junior, like junior summer going into that winter, that first six months, you're allowed to be recruited. Mm-hmm. And, uh, the top guys go on visits then. Right. And and mm-hmm. it's like, man, you're a really top player. And by the way, the top players at 16 are not often the top players at age 21. Right. It's just, but, but that's, they are right at that moment. They're, they're very, very talented players. So that's the ones that everyone goes after. And then, and then we're busy in our own season. So it's, we don't recruit a lot in that fall, but we'll mm. go, but, but we'll bring guys in on visits then. Then that winter through summer of their junior year, going into their senior year, that's a second chance to get out and see some guys. So, Hey, we'll go back out to some showcases. There'll be some camps. There'll be some things. There'll be some games. And that's a great window almost for these guys that are like, Oh, you know what? We, you know, we won one or two more looks at you and mm-hmm. we'll make a decision. So, and then we generally, I'd say we by the by June of, of going into their senior year, we're we're eighty percent done. And at that mm. point, what what's left over is the part that's left. And we're early; we're earlier than a lot of schools. But what's left over is, you know, uh, specific needs. Like there might be a specific hole or a specific player or a late developer, a guy who oof, he's close. And all of a sudden, you know, you see it all the time. A guy grows five inches, a guy puts on, you know, 20 pounds of muscle. Like it, it just happens. Or someone just gets confident and has belief and they were always a good player, but they, they just bloom. Mm-hmm. So, but those guys have to, we have to think they're, they're going to be a little bit special at that point. Or, you know, sometimes for us in their senior year, all of a sudden a guy on our own team is starting to have an incredible season. And, we're like, uh oh, he's gonna, you know, in a good way, uh oh, he's gonna sign mm-hmm. pro. Like he's mm-hmm. he's gonna leave early. And he's, you know, and so we have to fill those holes of guys who leave a little bit earlier than we mm-hmm. think they are, mm-hmm. uh, or maybe a transfer. So a senior shouldn't give up hope. It just it just becomes a little bit narrower. Um, and we try to be a little bit more direct at that point because as a junior, you can say, Hey, let's wait and see. But as a senior, you can almost tell, you know, student athletes a little bit earlier, Hey, mm. this probably isn't going to work or this, you know, there's still a chance and you can be, you know, you're not, I don't want to say the word stringing along, but for a lot early in the recruiting process to a lot of these kids, there's no point in saying no, because we don't know and they don't know where they're going to be, but as you mm-hmm. get later, so you're sort of stringing them along because you, you don't know. And, That's and a they good point. Know. That's per- great. But point. then later yeah. on, you kind of do know. So you have to be a little more honest and direct and say, Hey, you should look elsewhere or, Hey, let's let's keep seeing where this goes. Let's so, go. what is the secret right there? I mean, how you prepare you guys right there? What is your style of guy? Uh, you know, of playing? Because I saw, I tell you something. I saw some of the the game uh, highlights game that you did against Creighton. Actually, you you former school, you know, and uh, that was a tough laugh right there. But the style of playing that I see right there, man, oh man, I'm uh, I, I'm I'm surprised to be honest with you, uh, how good. Those guys are moving, you know, uh, 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 the, the the ball and the position that they're going to. The you know, the take me over, coach. Yeah, no, and full credit to Creighton. They they, uh, you know, so Johnny Torres, the coach there, was my assistant coach when I was um, at Creighton, and he was a teammate of mine as a pro when I played <laughs> Minnesota. So, so so we're we're good friends, and he's a, he's a fantastic person. So it's one of those. Um, no one likes losing, but I, I honestly rather losing to people that I want to root for in the next round. So definitely, it was fun definitely to root for him. And, and you know, we were we were the number two seed in the country, and probably would have been a number one seed had we, you know, uh, we didn't lose a game all season last year until the last game of the regular season, which was a a game that didn't matter because mm-hmm. we'd already won our conference and whatever. So, um, 
but it was one of that. Um, so we'd had a great season and we lost, you know, in, in early in the tournament, which happens. You watch the NCAA basketball tournament. It, it can happen. And that's mm-hmm. the beauty of sports. I think you actually have to celebrate, you know, and you don't celebrate as a team when it happens to you, but you have to celebrate it, that it happens. And, <laughs> it, and yeah. it's part of, you know, it's funny people. I think that's, what's different about us is we don't hide from losses and we don't hide from, we know like you all, almost that's an experience like that's something you should go through you shouldn't say oh well we were unlucky it was like you should embrace that experience because you know when you talk about sports molding you for life Mm -hmm. go Mm -hmm. through some some stuff that that maybe you didn't feel was fair maybe you thought you deserved better maybe you know whatever it might be but you have to live it and own it and be you know be present to it and and then grow from it um Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you know that's what we do from those experiences and in sports we're crazy if we don't because right there's only one winner and so going into it <laughs> you know like there's 250 of us trying to be this one team and we should all yeah. know better because it's probably not going to be us um mm-hmm. but so what do we do i mean again we we you know in the same way what i recruit i i mm-hmm. love brave people i love brave players i want us to play with bravery um so you know you see our guys they try things you know we want attacking players who take guys on and take chances and mm-hmm. you know if they lose the ball I want them to go try to win it back. I don't want them to be sad and upset. I want upset. guys, to, mm-hmm. you know, I mm-hmm. want them to react positively and just go, 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 go for it again. Um, same way with defenders. I want them to be brave enough to pressure and step and be left one V one and, and, you know, embrace the challenges. And and I think if you play that way, you get better because mm. you know there are, it's going to be some hard times and, and you're going to be asked to do some difficult things. But over the course of a couple of years, you mm-hmm. get better because of it. And you don't hide from moments. You don't hide from situations because that's the only way you don't get better. So, Beautiful. Beautiful. And, I, and then I think guys really start enjoying that. They embrace, oh man, coach, coach lets me do things. He lets me try things. He wants us to, you know, and um, take risk, right? Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. It, it becomes fun, man. And we, and we have a good time doing it. This, this is, you know, my, my wife works in the medical world and, and, you know, she, she works with, you know, um, sick kids. And, and so for us to get to play a sport and to go to school and to be with friends every day, man, it's we got, we got to enjoy this. This is, this a, is the best. Thing it gets. It's a blessing. It's a blessing right? It's for your wife work with, with sick kids like that. No, I, I, I understand that. And then now, uh, um, explain to me about your conference and the Pac-12. Because I seen you play a few teams, they're not within your conference, right? And then you you play even even you play South Florida, right? Uh, um, you know la- last season, right? You, you know excellent win three zero right there, uh, you know against South Florida. But t- so so explain to me that way that people know a little bit more about how is it that the Pac twelve, you know, and and then your conference and all the the the, the competition that you do through the year. Okay, so. It's good. So we have a 10 game conference schedule in the Pac-12. Okay. Um, and I can explain the Pac-12 a little better. And, that, and we're allowed 20 games. So we get 10 non-conference games. So for travel reasons or for you know budget and travel and students not missing class, we usually go on two non-conference trips. So last year we went to South Florida and we went to Grand Canyon University. So we went to Arizona and Florida. Um, and then we bring a couple of teams into us. Uh, mm-hmm. so, so, you know, Air Force came to us and I should know off the top of my head who the other one was, but, you know, a couple of teams come into us mm-hmm. and then we play our local rival. Michigan, game. Michigan State. Is that, is yeah, that... Michigan State. That was the yeah. other one. So, mm-hmm. so we have a couple of teams coming to us and then we have local rivals, Seattle University, Gonzaga, uh, University of Portland. So those sort of teams mm-hmm. and that kind of makes up the 10 games. So you kind of have. And then we we usually play most of those games and then go into our conference. Um, our conference is a little bit strange. So in men's mm-hmm. soccer, uh, Arizona and Arizona State don't have men's soccer. Washington State doesn't have men's soccer. So we have less schools than our conference has. So um, in turn, we actually have invited San Diego State into our conference for men's soccer. So they join and add, add a team to our conference. Um, mm-hmm. Hopefully they'll now be part of our conference. Conference. with all this realignment and changing going on it sounds like they might be a full-time member soon but that's kind of how it looks and just mm-hmm. big picture for for high school student athletes to know is 
we play our competitive season in the fall. So we play this, everyone knows, and we win our national championship in the fall. Mm -hmm. But as I said, any team that's really working at trying to be the best they can be has a non-competitive season in the spring. And the so spring, we, yeah. Mm -hmm. And in the, in the spring, we have about eight weeks where we are allowed eight hours, four hours with the ball, four hours without the ball. And so January through March, we usually do about eight weeks of a lot of, a lot of just technical training and some strength and conditioning training, which most 18, 19 year olds need. Mm -hmm. And then about March till May, we go back into our, uh, you know, what's called a non-competitive season. And that season is unbelievably good for me. A, all mm -hmm. the guys who didn't get to play or redshirted now get to play. So we get those guys real games. You're given um, a shot to get different, to get to see them, to see evolve. If you want exactly. to put it that way, mm -hmm. in, in mm -hmm. real games, and so you get, you know, even if you redshirt, people say, "Oh, I redshirt for the year." No, you redshirt for the fall because in the spring you're going to be playing games with us. So you basically, Beautiful. and even if you redshirt, you still get to train every day. But you finally get the games you want. So I get excited for guys. Um, they get to show themselves in real games, mm -hmm. and we play two games every day because we have a big enough roster. So we have 11, 12 guys. And our top guys every single spring day play against a professional team. So we'll play against Timbers. We'll play against, we went down to New Mexico and played New Mexico United. We went up and played Victoria and played the Canadian Premier League. So, and then our, the group who are just getting into it and starting will usually play maybe a division two, division three, or a junior college team. And, mm, um, excellent. and so great competition and so we play all these games and i think by the end of the spring we really know where guys stand if, and that's if when it comes to academics okay you know because you said this is important part right here do i have to make sure that i'm around what the universities requires or can you recruit a guy who has a little bit of a lower gpa we do have the ability i mean i think i think i tell every high school student Couple of things. A, very few people in life maximize their ability in just one facet. And by that, I mean sports. You know, generally mm -hmm. speaking, if you're a hard worker on the field, most of those guys are pretty hard workers across the board. Mm -hmm. They care, you know, and, they, and if you're a caring person and, and you, and you're, you know, that like you care about other things. So for me, it's always a red flag if a guy is a great player, but has a 2.0 GPA, just, you know, I have to ask those questions. Why? And, you know, what, and, and some people may have a legitimate reason, um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. but I, but I, I think that's one of the big things is if you're a hard worker, you're going to find a way to work hard and care about, you know, school. So you should at least, you're not necessarily a 4.0 student because that's not for everyone, but, that, mm -hmm. but that you're, that, that you're diligent. So mm -hmm. I like that. Um, I think, but I do think we can get, um, and I think if guys do well in school, it opens up doors for them. Academic money. We don't have a lot of that here at Washington, but schools do have it. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that makes that makes it's getting going to the school that you want a little bit easier. It might be so it might that might make it easier in your family. So now a school says, hey, we can only give you 25 percent scholarship, but you get 50 percent scholarship from academics. That school is now attainable to your family. That's great. Mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. so it's going to open doors. Both act both financially and then also just doors that hey that school is an option. Something important, you know. This is one of the questions that I always ask coaches to, you know, in order for for athletes and parents to get to listen to these episodes to uh, to know more about you, right? So, if I'm a student athlete and I'm looking at Washington right now, what should I expect from you as a coach? Uh, that's a great question. You know, I think it's I think it's what I would hope that most coaches would, would provide. And I think that's, um, you know, I think guidance, guidance through an important time in your life. Um, you know, these, these are, these are tricky times in 18 to 22 year olds lives. Um, mm. I think it's a tricky time as a student athlete too, because most players have had a lot of success and now are ramping it up to another level. And every time you ramp it up to another level, the chance of, being as successful is diminished, right? I mean, you're surrounded by more good players. And, and mm. then, you know, if you take the top two players from each team and now you put them all onto one team, only two players can now be the top two players on that new team. And mm. so 20 other players have to figure out what are my roles? How do I, 
um, how do I have value? How am I growing in this situation? And I think that's uh, that's what good coaches do. They you know they provide roles. And and again, we we it's uh, my job is not to squash that they can't become one of those two top players, or even that it maybe doesn't matter that you're one of those two top players, but it matters that you are maximizing what you do. So mm-hmm. we're trying to provide uh, guidance, some some foundation while you're while you're navigating these new situations. Um, and then hopefully giving some, you know, some sort of tactical expertise where they can also grow and learn in a sport they love. 